Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Whee! Um, big hello to the new subscribers, thanks for stopping in and joining us. Um, we are back on this 1988 of the year of our Lord. Mercury 70 horsepower inline three cylinder VRO2 stroke. You understand? And the first thing we're going to have to do is take care of these triplets, these carbonastors. We're going to have to get them off of there and, uh, I know we got uh, some issues in them carburetors. We did the fax check. We got some good compressiones. You understand us? I speak it as Spanish. We'll see. Uh, good spark on all three. Now, this old outboard came to, came to me free. Um, it was owned by a commercial fisherman or acquired by a commercial fisherman and uh, been abused pretty bad. So we've got a lot to do on this thing and uh, I don't know what we'll find. We just have to dig into it and see what we get, what's broke, what ain't, what's there, what ain't, what works, what don't. Anyway, let's dive back into it, go inside this old outboard and see what we find. Let's go. And if you look right there at that jet, you're going to see gas shoot out of there. So something is all clogged up in that cabaretpa. Watch it. I'm going to go ahead and start it for a second. I've got a sorbent here to catch any uh, gas that shoots out of there. But watch right there. See it? Hey! It's me! Ray, what can I do for you? I'm the best commercial fisherman in the whole North Territory. I was talking to my cousin, Prospector Pete. He's my first cousin, fourth connected. Why, well, he told me he was on that used do channel. He said he saw your movies on there, on them movie tapes. He said you was mocking, making fun of Mercer fishermen. Well, that's just un-American. I'm going to go on that used dude channel. I'm going to look around. I'm going to sniff around. If I find you've been making fun of commercial fishermen, I'm going to come back here, I'm going to fix you, and I'm going to fix you right. Okay, I wanted to get these carbapers off of here, and I just wanted to show you the setup on this. It looks like this linkage can stay and come off with the whole set as a triplet. I undid the fuel line coming in. Here's your fuel hose coming into the pump. I undid it right there. It goes to this top carb. Well, also, if you look on this top carb, you've got this fitting here where this foot valve primer hooks into the bowl on the top carb. If you notice, make sure I can get you in here. The other two carbs don't have that fitting. So you've got this fitting here with a hose coming from the foot valve primer here to the bottom bowl on the top carb. 
Also the main fuel line coming in hooks to the top carb right there. The other two carbs slave off of it for fuel via those hoses. But they don't have that other nipple there for the foot valve, just the top one does. So, that's what we got to do, is get me a little nipper, and nipper that zippy tie off right there. And then we've got to push that one off. right here there we go look at all that gas running out all right let me get in there all righty so and then i think the old triplets will come off in a union unit. Seem to. And there we have them. A set of triplets. Now something I did notice, it seems like the, you know, it was the middle carb that was leaking. And I guess it's just, but there is some goo right here. Now there's some on the top too, but not, not as thick as it is there, but I think that's just the gasket from where it hooked to the air silencer. But there's your triples. Okay, so I got them triplets off there. And uh, I took off the bowls of each one. So that's bottom, center, and top. And what I do, I'll dump this one out so you can see. And I, I do this regardless if I'm working on a, a twin carb, any multi-carb. See it? I don't know if you can see it, but I took this little scribe, and right there I scribed a B. I do the same thing on the upper body, right there. I scribed a B. All right, so. And then in the center, Cabo Reaper, I put a C for center. Even though these usually have something that will tell them apart from the other carb, it just makes it simple and quick and easy. But so what do we find with this middle carb? Arepa. Okay, here's the top. See, I marked it with a T. Right there. Look at the float. See it? It's level. It drops down. And here's the bottom. See the float? It drops down. Drops up. Drops down. Here's the center. See the float? Sticking kind of kitty womp upward. It don't drop. It stays dropped. It don't do anything. It's froze. So, that's all it was. You can see I can mash it down, but it's sticky. It sticks up. That should just fall back down. Here's the bottom. See, when I push it up and let it go, boop, boop, boop. I just like saying boop. Um, so that's all that's wrong with this one is it's really dirty and the needle in the seat needs to be all cleaned up. Um, and I think that'll take care of the carburetor issues, but I also found this. This is your linkage that hooks to all three, and it was broke right there. Right there. I think, yeah, see, that's broke. Snap! Cheap plastic garbage, so I'll have to make that 
or see if I got another one. I might have one. I don't know. We'll look in the bone pile, but if not, I can always run a screw and a nut through that. Probably it looks like I got enough meat to do that. But this just unscrews off of here. So if all I need is this little piece, if this was unscrewed. So I found that. Oh, he's finding the broke did. So, um, I'm going to do a quick clean on the top and bottom carbs with just some spray can, uh, rattle can carb cleaner, and get my little pokey wires and stuff, make sure all the holes are clean. And then I'm going to take the center carb completely apart and throw it in the ultrasonic cleaner and clean it just a little bit better. Being it's the one that has the issues, I'll be back. Well, it didn't have one of these little plasticky things in my bone pile, so we're going to repair this one. So I drilled a hole through that. Okay. And now, because I want a washer to set flat, I'm going to grind off this raised piece here. I don't see where we would need that. I don't know if you're going to be able to see over here too good with my grinder, but we're going to let you try. So I ground that off flat. You see this one sticks up? That one's flat now. Oh. Now let me find a screw and a nut. I'll be back. Okay, I took some of my favorite tool. Right there it is. JB Weld. Woo! Okay, and then what I did with this broken piece is I drilled a hole through all of it. I had to grind down this screw here a little bit and I drilled a hole through the two broken pieces and I put a nylock on the back. Now I'm going to take this whole thing with all these cracks and crevices and put the miracle tool. Mr. J. B. Weld. We will. I got some mixed up and we will take this and put it all in and around that. There's some nice cracks for it to fill into. And for what this little piece does, I think this will be plenty adequate. It should be just fine. We'll just put that in there. Don't have to be purdy. Okay. Because this just snaps onto the carb linkage. So I looked in my bone pile, not real good, but I did look around in there. I didn't see one, so I thought, I'll go this route. We'll do this thing, what they don't do much anymore, called repairing something. Not a lot of that goes on these days. It's all about replace the parts. Now don't get me wrong, don't get me wrong. I like them parts. But this plastic stuff, they seem to be getting a little ridiculous with it anymore. You understand? So we're just going to pucky this up, gook and pucky it with JB Weld and that screw and that nylock. And something tells me that's going to be plenty. Okay. There it goes. Now it will snap on there, it will snap on there, and it will snap on there, and everything move together, move together, move together. Have you? And something I wanted to kind of print out to you guys. Um, if you're new to messing with these carb rapers. Okay, what I'm trying to do is get the hinge pin for the float out. 
this is the center carburetor that's all stuck. All right, it's it's all real hard and stuck. When you go tapping these out, these ears right here on the carburetors, like I said, if you're new to this and you haven't done it a lot, these things will not take a lot of shear hammering that way because they're supported right there in the center. So really you've only got these two little ears and if you go whacking on that with a nail, a punch or whatever and a, a big hammer, you'll just break them ears off. Because like I said, it, it's a shear type thing because of the direction you're going and the fact that they're supported generally in there. So if you're going to do it, get you a nail, get your punch or whatever that fits in there and then don't become King Kong and go aping on it. Get you a little tappet hammer of sorts, something along this line. And then when you're tapping on that thing, make sure it's good and solidly supported. And just gentle, little, little quick taps. And then once you get enough of it out, try and get you some pliers that have good teeth on them. And do the twisty, twisty thing. And then my ears. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Get off me. All right. Those are the ears I'm talking about. So you can see they're supported with this bridge right across here. So if you've got it turned sideways and you're hammering on that, it'll break right there a lot of times. So you see all that rust coming in that ear there? See all that? See all that yuckum? Ew! So we'll get this good and cleaned up. But I just wanted to point that out. Be careful of those ears. Okay, here's a little hack I want to show you. Um, on these bowl nut screws, whatever you want to call them, most of the time they're screws. Um, if you're going to be using one of these, because sometimes, like on this one, it only has four, but on some of these bowl, carburetor bowls, you'll have six, eight screws to put in. It's okay to use one of these, but if you do it, do it like this. Come in at an angle. I know this is elementary, but trust me, I've seen it. Come in, just lightly put it up there. See how it's skipping there? Now you've seeded it. Same thing. Hopefully I'm getting this in there. Okay, there's the wobbly screw. Come in at an angle. Nice and slow. And it'll start thumping. Thump, 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 thump. Then take your regular screwdriver and snug them up. Don't put one of these drill drivers on there and go running them home because if you do you're gonna have a snapped off screw head or you're gonna have a busted piece of aluminum bowl. There's your little hack. So be careful. Come in at an angle and when it starts thump 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 switch over to the, the manual screwdriver. Well, there's that middle carburetor. Can you hear? Hear that float working? So, we've got her all cleaned up. This is what it started out looking like. And she looks a little better now. So there's the center. we still got the bottom and the top. I'll be back. Well, there they are, a set of triplets, all cleaned up. 
but something interesting makes you wonder, makes you ponder. This is the middle cobble reaper. There's the top, there's the bottom. When I clean this thing, even after it was in my ultrasonic cleaner and all, I always spray some tri-flow in the passages and everything and give it good blast of compressed air. And when I did, I was standing over there and when I gave psh, these hoses right here, I don't know which one, one of these two hoses, I gave it a good shot of air through there and this came out. It went splat right on the floor and I saw it. I just happened to be staring down when I gave it a shot. And that came out of that hose. I don't know what it is. I don't know what that is. But if that thing was in that hose, maybe right at the mouth of the, uh, where it goes into the bowl, makes you wonder if it wasn't something that, that simple that caused them to go, this outboard ain't worth crap, throw it on the ground in the backyard. That's where it belongs. Just makes you wonder. Alright, there's the carbs slid back on. The hose is hooked up. The linkage that was broke down here is all gookum puckied and works fine. Um, I haven't put zip tie hose zip ties on those yet I want to make sure I ain't gonna have to take them back off because I have to put that whole air silencer backing base on there before I can give it a test run but everything's back on I've got the little gaskets that go here and then the backing plate and the six nuts and uh, I can start her in but that's what she looks like kind of behind that air silencer bracket and all. I'll be back. Um, I did get some, I went out and got my little tank and filled it with good premium um, just gas with a little bit of marvelous mystery oil and a little bit of Startron in there. Other than that it's just gas because this has the BRO. So Mercury might call it something else. I'm not sure, but oil injection. There. Um, it's got that on it. I've got my door open, even though it is fit nor man nor beast out there today. That's what I said. Man nor beast. Luckily, it's coming easterly, so it's hitting the back of the house. But anyway, because when it comes from the west, northwest, I can't open my garage door. But there she be and we are going to sorry about that we are going to i've got my power pack battery booster box as the battery and i've got all me hoses hooked up and we are going to start this thing and see if we get a little bit better running mode it really wouldn't even idle before so that squeezy dunes bulb nice good pressure on the bulb i've got the carbs on and these nuts holding everything to the studs and i did put a little bit of the uh aviation permatex on the back of the silencer base here because when I, if I take this off again I want those gaskets, gaskets for each carb to come with it so it's not got any gasket sealer on the back of the gasket that touches the carburetor so following the old there's rules you understand you must follow those rules the rule is and this came from the best outboard tech I have ever known. He has since passed away. In fact, he was a graduate of several outboard uh, schools, including Mercury. That was his first one. 
And he told me, he said, basically when it comes to gasket sealers, when it comes to uh, gasket maker, permatexes and the like, never ever anything forward of the, from the intake gasket toward the air silencer. No sealers ever. And I agree with that. Don't do it. Now I did, I, when I say I put a little bit, I'm talking I just put a little bit where the ears of the gasket touch this black part behind it. So they stick to it. That's what I'm hoping. But uh, the rule and the general rule of thumb is from the intake gasket this way toward the carbs, no sealers. Manimba that. There's only one exception to that rule. Anybody know what it is? I ain't going to tell you. I'll let you guess. And then I'll tell you in the next video. There's one rule to that where you can break that rule. I'll tell you that. Anybody know what it is? All right. So, here we go. Got her juiced up. I got to turn the noise box off. Or off. I got to turn it on. I'd like to keep it off. Um, and even then, it's probably going to get a little smoky because we're running triplets with the VRO. And even though I'm running fresh gas, there's still gas, mixed oil gas, in my hose. So that's what's in these Cobb uh, Reaper bowls. Enough rambling. Let's see what happens. Let me turn on the noise maker. Here we go. Oh, now that is better. That's the way I want to see it. I did nothing but hit the key. You can see she's going to smoke a little. Look at you there. I just, I just love the way they sound, and they even sound better out of the tank on on ears. Um, it's peeing really well. I'll put you over there.
Where now? I'd say we are firing on all three. She idles nice. It'll sound a little better when I put the uh, cover to the air silencer on there. Hence, silencer. But now that I've got it running like this, I've got to get it out of the tank. And just so you know, you are looking at every millimeter of outboard engine that will fit in that tank. I have to turn it just right. I have to ease it up with the, the hoist and turn it just that and right there. Oh, right there. And then I get about that much clearance to come out of the tank. Um, that's every every inch outboard I get in my little tank, but uh, she fit in there. So um, now we got to get it out. I want to find out what's going on with the tilt trim. Um, it's wired, I think. A little green, thick, and blue. Thick. But uh, if you look right here, here's where the tilt deal should have been. And there ain't nothing there but broke. Um, then there's this. I'm not sure what we got going here. See this? They've got a big goop of uh, Fisherman Special, Commercial Fisherman Special on the end of it. Yeah. Big old goop. That. It's got a nice big clump of Fisherman Special on the end of it. Um, so they, you know, they at least sealed it. Hey. I don't know what the, I don't know what it does. I don't know. Um, was this a tachometer? Well, is it a tach? Was this the tachometer? And the reason why I ask that because it's it's not the barometer. You see. So was it a tachometer? Because here's the barometer. See, because they mounted the barometer to to the board. There was another thing over here too. I can't remember what it was, but we got a barometer. Um, it says right there, rain change fair, marine barometer. What's left of one anyway? So, ho, ho. but yeah, I can't test the tilt. Oh, I meant to clean that fly with the rusty teeth. We're going to start it again. Um, yeah, so I don't know what these wires were. This was your overheat alarm, I do believe. And I'm guessing these were the rest of the sensor alarms and stuff. But the tilt should have come up through here into there. And I found no place on the side of the motor. A lot of times there will be a tilt on the side of the cowling somewhere, the cowling pan, but not on this one that I could find. But now there are the wires. Now they're hooked in to this, all this, but that, that's some of your tilt wires right there, the bigger, fatter ones. That's your VRO. That oil getting a little low. Main fuse. So, I'm going to start it one more time real quick because I like to clean up them flywheels. So, let's Turn on the sucker. I do not condone or recommend this.
I'm tired. So that's going to be one more rep. Oh, I said that wrong. See, I'm tired. That is a wrap. <laughs> and this is one more I'm tired hat from Kodiak. Thanks for watching. More vids are coming on Inside Outboards with your host, Cody Bass.